So we have a brand new product today from Ubiquity. It's been a while since we've looked at a brand new release and this one's a little bit different. Contrary to popular belief and what you'd think Ubiquity do, this isn't actually an access point. Huh, thought that was a PoE injector. That is the device itself. Okay, so this genuinely feels like an oversized PoE injector. As you can see, we've got power in on one side and then an ethernet port on the other. And then under this little thing, we have our antenna port. So let's just set this off to one side. Now this here is your, well, I would say standard, Ubiquity access point. Their standard Ubiquity access points look like the UFOs. You guys know exactly what they look like. These things give off Wi-Fi that client devices like your laptops and phones can connect directly to. Now for the longest time, all of the access points have had mesh capabilities. They even make a dedicated mesh access point. What is mesh, if you don't know? Well, basically what it is, is picking up a Wi-Fi signal and then basically repeating that Wi-Fi signal. So to start with, I'm struggling to see how this device is gonna fit into the lineup. Seeing as all of the other access points have mesh capability, why would you need a standalone mesh device? So in the box, you get a power adapter as well as a mounting plate. So that will basically go onto the wall. This goes onto there like that. So that just screws on there like that. And then here you go. So to test this device out, what we're gonna need to do is create a wireless network with our Wi-Fi access point here, our Ubiquiti one, and then see if we can get this bridge up and running and then do some tests to see how fast this thing is and what it looks like with inside the Ubiquiti OS. So our U7 access point now has the infamous blue light on it, meaning we've got it adopted to our Unify controller. I can see it in here and our five gigahertz is running at 80 megahertz, just so you guys are aware. Okay, so we've got one little white light on the bottom and nothing else and oh my God, it has appeared inside of Unify. So all that's plugged in to the device bridge at the moment is just power and Unify has already picked it up. And to be honest, I'm surprised it has picked it up because I have wireless meshing and new Wi-Fi device Autolink unchecked inside of my Unify software. But nevertheless, Unify has still picked it up, so let's click Adopt Device. This is interesting. It says, adopting this device will enable PoE pass-through. Ensure that devices connected to port one support PoE. Connecting to a non-PoE device may result in damage. So that would tell me that the PoE port on this device is 24 volts or 48 volts passive PoE and not PoE plus or PoE plus plus. So here we go. The UDB is uplinked via mesh and it's uplinked to our access point U7 outdoor. So let's see what settings we can change. We can see its current signal indication, which is minus 41, really strong, obviously because they're sat so close together. We've got some more information down here about our mesh parent, which is the U7 Pro, our signal and our TX and RX rates. And then up here, you can see our little itty bitty, one tiny little port on here. So if we go into our port manager and click on this port, you can see we can give it a name. You can go ahead and enable or disable PoE pass through. So if we were to attach one of these little flex switches to that port, let's see if it supplies power to our flex switch. And there we go. This thing has booted right up. So we now have a four port little switch here, which is being fed by this tiny bridge. Very, very cool. Right, so let's try and reiterate what's actually happening here. So we've got our internet switch here in the studio. We follow this cable down here all the way to our U7 outdoor access point. We've managed to get our bridge meshed to this access point. So this is picking up the signal from here. And then we're using the PoE port to power this flex mini two and a half gig switch via the PoE, which is being supplied from this. So now if I take a patch cable into this little switch and then into my laptop, we should have internet which is traveling over this wireless bridge here. 18 ping and yeah, it's a rocket, about 500 meg there. So I'm thinking that this device 
is Wi-Fi 5. I think this is a Wi-Fi 5 device. <laughs> Okay, so we're doing a bit more of a realistic test now. I'm bringing the device outside and I've put our access point over there on the driveway and I've got our EcoFlow battery here, hopefully to power this little thing up all the way down here and see if it can pick up the signal. Okay, so let's see if the little bridge now down at the end of the garden is connected. I can see inside of the Unify software that it is and our port is active because I plugged in a PoE camera, one of Ubiquiti's G5 flexes. So we can see if we can get access to that. So as you can see, my cameras are on screen now and if I click on garden and try and play this little camera here, yeah, as you can see, the guy's down at the end working on the gate. This image is live right now and coming through that Ubiquiti bridge. One thing I had picked up on though was that the signal was quite low for only around 120 yards of distance. And then I realized that you have to manually select the Omni antenna option. When we put it in its Omni mode, it didn't really improve the signal much, but it gave us some extra speed and we were seeing around 200 download on a speed test. If you go back to the built-in antenna option though and just point the thing in the right direction, that seems to give the best results. Speed test now showing north of 300. And that is some really impressive speed considering this unrealistic scenario, so close to the ground with Forenzel at play. Now, they also make a pro version of this bridge, and it's basically the same thing, but with a beefed up antenna system capable of around five kilometers of range if you've got line of sight. These ones are powered via a PoE injector though and have a PoE pass-through option for powering a new device. And now these are really similar to the Air Max Nano Beam ACs, but obviously these work inside of Unify and have a simpler setup. All you've got to do is click a couple of buttons. The pros seem to be able to work independently on their own, connecting to a Unify access point or as a bridged pair, with one being the parent and one being the child. I tried to use the Pro as a parent to the non-Pro device, but the non-Pro only seems to be able to connect to Unify access points. The non-Pro won't link up with the Pro as its parent. I find this thing odd because you could use a standard Ubiquiti access point. Take the Ubiquiti mesh access point, for example. But like I said, this thing has loads of different use cases. I'm currently having some gates installed down the end of my driveway. I've run fiber and Cat 6E down to the gates under the ground. But if I hadn't and I needed to get data down to the gates, this would be the perfect device to do that. It could live down there, connect to my intercom, connect to all my cameras and bridge it back to the house to give an internet connection down to the gates. So like I said, depending on the price of this thing, I think this can be really disruptive. And there's loads of use cases for this. It just depends what you need it for. It's pretty fast and has a decent range as tested down the end of my driveway. Anyway guys, that's been my first impressions of this strange little radio from Ubiquiti. My name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.